In the continental United States, in the lower 48, uh, the region which is of primary concern for the generation of a local tsunami is the Cascadia subduction zone, which would include the states of Washington, Oregon, and the northern part of California. We have never recorded instrumentally uh, a larger earthquake in that part of the world. The reason is that seismology is very young science. We have had instruments only for 100 years. But we have several ways of assessing the seismic potential. One of them is geological fieldwork. I first came out here in the spring of 1986. At that point, the very idea of, of very big earthquakes here was controversial, to say the least, among our scientists. Very few believed that they could happen here, and nobody had demonstrated that they had happened here. So our objective right now is to have a good look at a sand layer laid down right on top of a salt marsh that got dropped down deep into the tide zone here 305 years ago. This salt marsh, represented by the soil here, was way up at the level of the present salt marsh above us. The land abruptly dropped during an earthquake. The same down drop happening here happened on the seafloor and also other parts of the seafloor got raised. Well, that made a tsunami. And that tsunami surged in here and laid out this sheet of sand. Now, after that was all done, then the tides were free to come in because the land had dropped. So they laid down this mud, hence this three-layer cake of salt marsh peat, tsunami sand, tide flat mud. The geological record of these great earthquakes goes back thousands of years. You can go out and see banks of tidal creeks like this one that give you a 3,500 year history. You can see as many as eight earthquakes recorded in those banks. The average interval from one of these very big earthquakes here to the next is close to five centuries. We're 300 years from our most recent one, but that doesn't mean you've got 200 years necessarily to wait for the next one.